Uh, my parents were Victor and Ollie Hart. Uh, my mother's maiden name was Wetzel. Um, my dad, uh, Victor Hart, was born out on Battlefield Park Road uh, near the Illinois Bridge. Uh, had two brothers, uh, Everett Hart and Dowart Hart, and two sisters, uh, Leola Dees and Thelda Flint. Uh, my dad uh, worked at the Farmer's Hardware um, after he came back from the war. Uh, Farmer's Hardware was owned by uh, Frank West and uh, he later then went to work for Florence Hill at the Southern Mercantile and my mother, uh, Ollie, was uh, the janitor at the Methodist Church for a while, uh, part-time and being a uh, stay-at-home mom and housewife. Uh, she passed away whenever I was 13 years old. Uh, my dad passed away in 1978. Uh, whenever I was a kid, my job, uh, uh, first jobs, I guess, that I had was delivering the grit paper. I delivered the grit paper all over Prairie Grove uh, on my bicycle. Uh, sold the grit paper for 15 cents, and I kept a nickel out of it. So I had about 75 customers that I delivered the paper uh, half of the route on Friday after school and, and the other half on Saturday morning. Uh, later in life, uh, uh, whenever I was about a sophomore in high school or junior year, no, a freshman in high school in about the ninth grade. Uh, I worked uh, for uh, Ronnie Spencer at Spencer's Body Shop uh, at the corner of Mock and Cleveland Street. Uh, and then uh, later I went to work for Elton Skelton and Donnie Skelton at the Crescent Department Store. I uh, worked uh, after evening or after school and uh, on Thursday night we stayed open late on Thursday night and then Saturday. The early days of my childhood uh, consisted of a uh, garden, a large garden that uh, my dad planted. It was my responsibility to make sure the garden all got plowed and the weeds pretty much kept out of it. Dad would do some hoeing, but uh, I was responsible for the the tilling and the uh, keeping up of the garden uh, during the summer months. And of course, uh, I, we had a pretty good sized lawn, um, and I had to mow the lawn. We mowed the lawn with an electric lawn mower. Uh, after we had done away with the old reel type lawn mower that didn't have a motor, you just pushed it. Uh, we had an electric lawnmower. Um, later, uh, got a just a push type Briggs and Stratton lawnmower, and we thought we were big time. Uh, Dad, uh, since my mother had passed away when I was 13, uh, Dad did the laundry during the, before he went to work at the Southern, and uh, and then whenever I came home, I had to get the clothes out of the washing machine, hang them on a clothesline. We didn't have a clothes dryer. Hung them on the clothesline, and uh, then whenever he came home, or if they were dry before then, well, I would uh, get the clothes in, fold those up. Uh, my dad uh, always liked to wear uh, ironed uh, and starched and ironed clothes, and there was a lady by the name of Stella Norris that did the ironing for him and uh, down the street and was charging him 10 cents a, uh, a piece and I told him that hey I could make that so I started ironing the clothes and so I did all the ironing uh, for 10 cents a piece uh, for him from that point on. Uh, my early memories of downtown Prairie Grove were 
pretty early, I guess, uh, being uh, that I lived in town. I lived at 210 uh, West Thurman Street, uh, which was two blocks south and two blocks west of the main stoplight in downtown Prairie Grove. Uh, and my dad worked at the Farmer's Hardware, which is it was at the corner of uh, Mock and Buchanan on the northwest corner of the stoplight. Uh, I was in and out of that store uh, quite frequently. Um, Phyllis uh, Orr, uh, Phyllis Bartholomew Orr, uh, was the bookkeeper there. Uh, Frank West was the owner. And my dad uh, worked along with uh, Ernie Lossing uh, from, he actually lived over at Farmington. Uh, his daughter, uh, or his son, uh, Johnny Lossing, uh, married Sue uh, Bartholomew Lossing at the time. Uh, but then later his uh, uh, dad went to work at uh, Southern Mercantile. Why? Uh, Southern was owned by, uh, or managed by Florence Hill, uh, Viola. Hannah uh, was the uh, secretary, bookkeeper, accountant type person that uh, worked there at the Southern at that time. Um, Bob Heiler uh, was also an employee there. Um, of course, the store uh, the Southern Mercantile had a grocery store, uh, and it it was uh, just east of uh, the main Southern Mercantile building, and was accessible from the Mercantile and from the street side also. And going east, the next store was IGA. It was owned by Guy and and uh, Guy Sparks and Donnie Stone. Um, Crandall Miller was the butcher. Uh, Donnie Ramsey, who lived out at Illinois Chapel, uh, about five years older than me and my best friend, uh, worked there as a delivery boy. Uh, there was another fellow by the name of Ronnie Miller that worked there also. I think the next door to the east was probably uh, uh, Jack's Barbershop. Um, and then the store uh, east of that uh, became uh, the hardware store when uh, Frank sold it out, sold his hardware business to uh, George West. Uh, it became the hardware store. And uh, east of that was the Neal's Dry Goods store um, owned by uh, dude Neil and I can't remember his wife's name uh, but they had a uh, clothing shop there and then the next store was the Sterling Drug Store owned by uh, Vincel Bell and Clarence Davis they were druggists there uh, the next store was the uh, Crescent Department Store owned by originally owned by Guy Sparks and then later Elton and Donnie and uh, Skelton uh, were there. Uh, the next store was the uh, Beverly Theater uh, the, where we could go to see uh, movie theater shows for uh, 10 cents on Saturday. Uh, I saw early westerns. Uh, um, saw some Elvis Presley early movies there, uh, Teddy Bear and some other uh, movies there. And the next uh, business uh, east was, uh, originally was um, Cunningham's Alice Chamber. Uh, they lived at Illinois, uh, Little Elm. 
I'll think of his name in a minute, but Tommy Smith uh, and, and uh, young Jimmy Smith, uh, not the older Jimmy Smith, but young Jimmy Smith uh, owned the uh, tractor place there. And um, then on the corner of Neal and Buchanan was a service station. Um, I can't remember the brand name. Uh, across the street to the north on Neal and Buchanan was a, a Burl Horton's Texaco station. Uh, as you came back toward the west, uh, there was a, a big apartment house there at one time. It's now, uh, that would be where Everett and Whitlock had their uh, law firm, but there was a large uh, house where really I, uh, my dad and mother and Vincel Bell and Pauline, uh, Larry Bell and Joanne lived in this apartment uh, building that was upstairs and the downstairs. Uh, the two families lived there. Um, uh, west of there was an eat shop uh, owned by um, Epperson's um, big guy had a, a limp or a, something I can't remember either polio or some problem with his leg I always wore a big white hat uh, I want to say his name was Herb but I'm not sure of that um, Next to that was the um, electric company, um, or the gas company, Arkansas Western Gas Company, um, that was there. I can't remember the owner's or the manager's name right now. Uh, then Doc uh, Mock had his clinic. Uh, there along the north side of the street. Uh, the next business was a small business. In fact, Irene Dyer had a, a cafe in there at one time. Uh, and my mother worked at that cafe a, a while. Uh, west of that uh, would be uh, mm, a barber shop. Uh, Red Pennell had a barber shop. Uh, it was later sold to um, Warren Napier. Um, uh, west of that uh, was a uh, five and dime store. I'm not sure about location there because there was also a, um, a cleaners, a dry cleaners. Uh, along there on the north side, uh, uh, Charles Stills had a dry cleaner shop. Uh, and um, then Dolph Helm had a uh, shoe shop, saddlery shop along that north side. Um, there was a locker plant. Uh, on the north side, uh, right next to the bank. Uh, that locker plant was owned by uh, uh, the Allens. Mm. The, of course, the Farmers and Merchants Bank then was on the corner until about 1957 or 8 when there was a large fire and the, it burnt the bank. Uh, they rebuilt it uh, along that same period of time. And then, of course, uh, across Mock Street to the west was the hardware store. Uh, a small, on the north side, a small um, shoe shop, dress shop run by uh, Myrtle Ash, uh, her husband Tom. Uh, was the night watchman uh, for a while. Uh, 
um, after he passed away and after my mother passed away, why my dad had uh, married uh, Myrtle. Uh, then uh, Fiddlers had a Oklahoma Tire and Supply store. Um, and the next building uh, was the Deep Rock Station where Marshalls had a uh, Deep Rock Station radiator shop. Uh, then the corner uh, was a warehouse uh, plumbing shop where the Farmer's Hardware had a uh, Joe McCardle that lived down at Cane Hill had uh, did his plumbing work uh, there. <clears throat> uh, on the corner where uh, there is now a, a storage building for the Ace Hardware, um, there was a uh, cafe uh, ran by Hatchet is her son that had the uh, auto parts store over at Lincoln. Um, then at one time the post office was the next building to the west of that. There was a small uh, uh, section of building I, uh, about where the pawn shop is now. Um, next to that uh, there was a furniture store uh, and uh, a feed store uh, in the corner where is now a storage for Ace. Um, if you start back on the south side of Buchanan Street at Mock and Buchanan, uh, Leighton McCoy had a uh, produce and feed store there on the corner. Um, then the cafe that is now the Beehive was uh, was the Beehive then. I don't know what it's called now, but it was the Beehive as a restaurant there. Uh, and then there was a uh, Skelly Station um, west from there, belonged to a fellow by the name of Buckles. Um, then a house or two and uh, where the Jim's Razorback Pizza place is, uh, Pep and Bill Campbell's had a uh, service station uh, repair shop in there. And that kind of gets you two blocks up and down Main Street as I remember it as a kid growing up. Uh, attending school at Prairie Grove was very very good. Uh, the school that uh, grade school that I went to was at uh, uh, Neal and Park Street, mm, Bush Street, Neal and Bush Street, on the south side, uh, southeast corner of that intersection. Uh, I went through first, second, and third grades there. Uh, my first grade teacher um, was uh, Sarah Carl. Um, Mrs. Uh, Eula Butler uh, was my second grade teacher. My third grade teacher was uh, Mrs. Adams. Um, on the west side of Bush and Neal Street was our playground, per se, uh, not for the first, second, and third graders, but uh, the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. Uh, we had our baseball field that we played baseball and was able to play along that playground on the west side. Uh, the high school building, uh, the old high school building, uh, was still standing at the time had uh, big uh, concrete steps and, and real wide banisters on that. And I went through the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade there. Uh, there was a lunchroom uh, back behind that building that all of the school came to the lunchroom. Um, 
By this time, the uh, newer high school had been built. Uh, kids uh, 7 through 12 were bussed over for lunch at that uh, Mabel Couch. <coughs> Mabel Couch was the uh, lunchroom supervisor, I guess you would say. Uh, Pete Kurtzinger was another lady that worked in there and several others, but uh, lunches were excellent, uh, very good. Uh, kids a lot of times nowadays complain about school lunches, but we had very, very good cooks and very good uh, school lunches all through that. Um, there was a, uh, my fifth grade or fourth grade teacher was Mrs. Farley. Uh, my fifth grade teacher was Mrs. Uh, Rogers. Um, there was also a uh, Miss Holmes. Uh, who was the uh, one of the teachers and principal uh, there, uh, Mrs. Uh, mm, Mac Adams, I think was her name, uh, that taught there, and uh, one of the, the grades. Because uh, I was born in 1947, uh, that was after the war, there was a lot of uh, kids in my class uh, and prior to and my class and the class after me because we were kind of considered war babies. Um, two or three grades uh, prior to that, that was pretty small class. Uh, then in the seventh grade, uh, we moved to the new high school building and had seventh, eighth, uh, ninth through 12 uh, all there. Um, had uh, agricultural, uh, had an agri uh, building there. J.J. Uh, Thomas was the agri teacher. Uh, there was a home ec building uh, there that they taught home ec to the girls at the time, no boys particularly, uh, and I know nowadays they, uh, girls and guys both take home ec, but uh, we didn't do that so much. We took agri. Um, we had a large round top gymnasium, which burnt. Uh, I, I'm not sure when it burnt. I left here when after I graduated out of high school. Uh, I think it burnt sometime in the late 60s. Um, they built another gymnasium uh, there. Uh, they had uh, built a, uh, while I was here in school, they had built the new, at the time was the new elementary school uh, and had a, a cafeteria so they moved the lunchroom and the um, the other grade school, the intermediate classes in the grade school out of the old schools on uh, Bush and Neal Street uh, down to uh, west of the high school complex per se. Um, it's, and, and there wasn't a, a street there that was named uh, those roads were dirt roads at the time. Uh, the uh, baseball and football field was uh, one and the same. It's, uh, it was approximately where the base, the football field is now. Um, and had a fence around it uh, in the in my early days, uh, Prairie Grove Town had a baseball team uh, that played uh, in that uh, baseball field on Sundays. They would have teams, and there were um, the Cosbys, uh, Alfred, and, and some of the Cosby boys, and Red Cosby. Um, 
would uh, would come in and play, and they had been they were back from um, minor league teams. I know I remember uh, some of them coming back from the San Francisco Giants organization where they'd played. So there was some pretty good baseball players. Uh, Buchanan, uh, Buck Buchanan, uh, was one of the early baseball players. Uh, Hugh Remington was uh, one of the earlier baseball players. Um, and I can't remember some of the rest, but we used to always go up and watch the baseball, the, what we call town baseball games. Um, our summers as a kid were uh, primarily uh, with Little League Baseball. Uh, Little League Baseball, the coaches were pretty good babysitters. And so we would go uh, and practice uh, baseball uh, pretty much every day, uh, the days that we didn't have games. Uh, we took the school bus to our games uh, and we'd played Lincoln and Winslow, Mountainburg, uh, Greenland, uh, all around to the uh, teams. Uh, Eddie McClellan uh, was on my baseball team. Uh, Roger Geiger, uh, and several other of us uh, were on the little league teams. But in on Wednesday, uh, they would take the baseball team to Lake Weddington uh, swimming. Uh, sometimes we'd go to Fedville to the city park and go swimming up there on Wednesday. But we normally would have an activity on Wednesday that the baseball team would be able to go to. And so the coach, uh, J.C. Dill, was one of those coaches. Um, it kind of became to be a uh, pretty good babysitter for moms and dads to bring their kids and dump them out. And, hey, they'll play baseball all day or go swim. You know? It was pretty, it was a lot of fun. My family attended church. Yes, I attended church uh, all the way through at the Methodist Church uh, here in Prairie Grove. Uh, uh, whenever I was a kid, the uh, Battlefield Park was uh, uh, a big thing, particularly around Labor Day. Uh, we had, uh, it was a clothesline fair. Uh, they hung uh, wires between the trees. Um, in fact, uh, Mrs. Irene Dykes was um, the art instructor, art teacher, um, and she gave some art classes and stuff um, in the basement of the old high school building downstairs. Uh, and I took some of those art classes early uh, whenever I was uh, 13 or 14 years old, 12 or 13 years old, I guess, there was a penny art contest, uh, and I had uh, won a penny art contest with a drawing that I did. Um, one of the uh, business owners that I forgot to mention, uh, uh, Leck and Ruetta Carmen had a drugstore about where the, uh, on the south side, where uh, uh, a uh, photograph studio is today. There's several springs that are around uh, Prairie Grove. Uh, there, there is, of course, the Mock Spring, which is at the uh, downtown in Mock Park, uh, and that spring uh, supplied the the water for all of Prairie Grove until it grew such that they needed more water. Uh, at which point they went to um, Bethel Grove community and. There was a spring out there 
uh, originally called the Lawler, L-O-L-L-A-R, Lawler Spring, uh, later became the Ruby Springs. Uh, that Ruby Spring uh, currently flows water out from under the ground uh, about eight inches in diameter, 365 days out of the year. Uh, the that spring, uh, or actually the Bethel Grove Community Building is on one acre of land that was donated to them by my grandfather. So that Ruby Spring comes out from under the corner of that uh, one acre of land. Uh, they piped that in um, uh, the late 40s, early 50s probably late 40s, they piped that. Uh, and it's not too far as the crow flies there across uh, my dad's old home place or my uncle's place uh, and to uh, Prairie Grove, uh, built a big water tank uh, and had a, a water reservoir in downtown. Uh, there was a smaller spring uh, out on um, Viney Grove Road. Um, they now have a, uh, it, it's, I can't remember the small housing addition on Viney Grove Road, just uh, right there. There was a big white barn and a, uh, they used to call it Mineral Springs. I never did understand why it was Mineral Springs because really it was right uh, on the bottom side of the barn lot, but supposedly uh, had uh, curing uh, capabilities and had uh, in the past maybe had had thought to be cured. Uh, some people of some rheumatoid arthritis or something, I don't know. Uh, Kettle Springs is another spring out south of Prairie Grove. Uh, there is a Cove Creek, is a spring, uh, quite a bit south. Uh, uh, the Cove Creek spring still runs, uh, still supplies water to a lot of people in the southern side of the county who don't have good water. They uh, either work on cisterns or wells that go dry, uh, and that the Cove Creek spring still supplies water to a lot of people. Uh, if someone were to ask me uh, about my hometown of Prairie Grove, I'd, I'd, I'd crack. Uh, it's an emotional thing for some of us uh, because it, it's always been good to me.